You're about to listen to a BBC podcast, and, and trust me, you'll get there in a moment. But if you're a comedy fan, I'd really like to tell you a bit about what we do. I'm Julia McKenzie, and I commission comedy podcasts at the BBC. It's a bit of a dream job, really. Comedy is a fantastic, joyous thing to do because really you're making people laugh, making people's days a bit better, helping them process all manner of things. But, you know, I also know that comedy is really subjective and everyone has different tastes. So we've got a huge range of comedy on offer from satire to silly, shocking to soothing, profound to just general prattling about. So if you fancy a laugh, find your next comedy at BBC Sounds. BBC Sounds. Music. Radio. Podcasts. Hello and welcome to the Scottish Football Podcast with me, Jonathan Sutherland, bringing all the news, insight and analysis you need each day, delivered in less time than a Todd Cantwell substitution. It's Friday the 1st of December and coming up today... McCausland, fight for the shot, McCausland, the goal! Despite Ross McCausland's goal, we reflect on a disappointing draw for Rangers and an entertaining evening in Helsinki. Just evades him and a strike comes in. Oh, it's oh, wonderful! Geez. What a strike from Angus McDonald! We'll also run the rule over an intriguing set of weekend premiership fixtures. And let's be honest, it's what everyone is talking about. And that's when it becomes live. That's when it becomes real. They will be playing in Frankfurt on this day and they will be playing. And that's when it becomes real. We'll look ahead to the Euro 2024 draw in Hamburg with the BBC's man in the know, Jonathan Pearce. This is the Scottish Football Podcast. We'll be joined by Jonathan Pearce very soon, but we're already graced by the company of our chief sports writer, Tom English. Hello to you, Tom. I know you must be positively salivating about the draw tomorrow and working out every single permutation. What are you praying and hoping for? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm currently writing a piece, Jonathan, so I'm, um, uh, if you want to know anything about Albanian football, I'm your man. Um, <laughs> so, it's, it, look, it's, it's, it's really, really exciting. Uh, Scotland haven't been in this situation since 1997, since the draw for the World Cup in 1998 was made. Last time for the Euros, obviously Scotland still hadn't qualified, so they were they were kind of they were one of four teams uh, under the banner of winner of playoff C. So this time their name is going to be up in lights tomorrow. It is. It's it's really exciting. Pot one. I mean, we've been talking about it. Everyone's talking about it. Who do you want from pot one? Not England. I want not, England. No, I don't. I don't want England. England, <laughs> England apart from apart from being pretty good, uh, England kind of yes. just played them. Played them in the last Euros. Mad enough with them. France too good. I would go for Spain too familiar. Just played them. Don't want them again. Here's me speaking like a like a member of the Tartan Army. Listen to me. Uh, I'm, I'm just I'm, I'm just jumping on your bandwagon genres, if you don't mind. Ah, you're welcome on board, Tom. Thank Good you. to have you. I'm going Germany, part one. Ah, okay. Host nation, bit of glamour, heart of the tournament, plus they're on a lousy run. Bring it on. Sounds good. Sounds, sounds actually quite ominous. Um, we'd have the opening match against them, but I like what you're thinking. We want the buzz. It's that balance between a doable group, but also we want it to be enjoyable. Uh, I'm looking at Albania, pot two, and I'm hoping Luxembourg qualify through the playoffs, but I think that's probably pie in the sky. Well, I look at pot two and Hungary, Turkey, Romania, Denmark, Albania, Austria, and you're thinking, oh, you know, all, they're all winnable games. They are all winnable games. They're all losable games as well. Um, they're not stellar names, but you look, you know, Turkey to be avoided, they won the group with Croatia in it. Romania won the group with Switzerland and Israel in it, Hungary, they won their group. You know, they're not big name teams, formidable, uh, intimidating teams, but they've done well to get to this point and they're trappy, you know, they're trappy. So again, I'd probably go for Romania, maybe. And this is all part of the crack, you know, everyone's doing this, right? It's great fun. It's just, let's just bring it on, you know, bring it on. Great stuff, Tom. We've sorted it out. We just need Jonathan Pierce to make it happen for us. He'll join us very <laughs> shortly. But before that, let's quickly run through today's headlines. Rangers Europa League ambitions hang in the balance with one game to play following a one-all draw with Group C bottom club Aris Limassol at Ibrox. 
There was drama aplenty as Aberdeen drew 2 all with HJK in snow-covered Helsinki. The Dons, whose Conference League qualification hopes were already over, remain third in Group G. Defender Sophie Howard says the Scotland women's team are ready to put things right after a disappointing Nations League campaign so far as they prepare to face Belgium in Leuven this evening. You can watch that one live on BBC Alpha and on the iPlayer. And all eyes are on Hamburg as Scotland await their Euro 2024 fate with the tournament draw set to take place there tomorrow. The Scottish Football Podcast. We'll get to last night's European action and the weekend fixture shortly, but it is like Christmas Eve today with the Euro 2024 draw taking place tomorrow. So let's start with that. Jonathan Pierce is overseeing the draw for BBC Television tomorrow, and I'm delighted to say he's with us now. Jonathan, in terms of the actual draw itself and the logistics, I know you're a, a veteran of covering these draws from probably as way back as when Seth Blatter used to juggle the balls and all the rest of it. It's very much a all singing, all dancing affair now. In terms of logistics, how will it work tomorrow? It's happening in Hamburg, kickoff at five o'clock. Uh, uh, Greenwich Mean Time. Yeah, it's a simpler draw than the World Cup draws because in the World Cup draws, teams from the same confederations can't be put into into the same group uh, together. So we're not, we we haven't got that. So it's an open draw, if you like. the the uh, The teams will be placed into the into the into the various groups. They'll they'll draw the, all the top seeds teams out first of all. They'll be they'll be placed into their groups, and then each team will come out and they'll be placed in a separate group and then they'll start that's when the draw gets really interesting when they start pulling out from the next the next group of uh, the, the, the second pot and then they'll place them uh, into uh, into each group uh, and you you'll see the team will come out and then the group that they'll, they'll be placed into will come out as well and there'll be all sorts of stars uh, making those uh, draws. And it's interesting because they used to be a lot more open about this, UEFA and FIFA. You'd know in advance who was making the draw. Uh, you, 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 you could go into dress rehearsals and see it. Those days have gone now. It's all so super secretive. I mean, I don't know why they don't want you to know who drew who in which dress rehearsal you know why don't they want you to know that <laughs> are you excited it's feeling like it's becoming real yeah i mean it 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 you know it's fantastic i think for for england scotland and and hopefully wales to be there i, I think it will just it will make the the competition breathe with more intensity than it than it, than it always will be you know um i've covered the scots in euro 96 um, I did their games for the radio uh, and loved it. Um, and I, I uh, was involved with them as well um, in charge of the radio station that covered them in, in the World Cup in Italy and so on and uh, in the Euros in Sweden. So I know what it means to have the Scots there with the English and, and as I say, and the Welsh would be fantastic. And it is very, very exciting. You know, it's Scotland's fourth European finals, I believe. Um, they haven't won a game in them since Switzerland in Euro 1999. Uh, Ali McCoist. Yeah, Absolutely. that's right. Um, so it's long overdue and it's going to be very, very exciting. And I love the draws because there's a jeopardy in them and you think, well, you know, the most interesting thing is you say, that like, like when Scotland come out, so their first game will be against so-and-so and it will be there. And that's when it becomes live. That's when it becomes real. They will be playing in Frankfurt on this day and they will be playing. And that's when it becomes real. Jonathan, brilliant. Absolute pleasure. Um, thank you very much for doing that. Appreciate it. No problem. Right, let's get to the European action. Tom English draws for both Rangers and Aberdeen last night. Let's start at Ibrox. Uh, what did you make of Rangers' performance overall? Uh, a real missed opportunity? Mm, definitely. Uh, poor. Um, playing against uh, a weak enough team that they should be beaten at home. And uh, I think the Ibrox crowd made their, made their feelings known at halftime and full-time. That's, that's not good enough. The team, again, that Clement picked is weird. I think any team, any Rangers team with Sam Lammers in it, and I don't really pick it on him, but I'm going to, any team with him in it is a weak team because I just, for the life of me, and I'm not the only one, don't see what he does. And you accommodate Lammers in that position. You move Cantwell wide in, into a position that's not his natural position. So I think you got the worst of all worlds then. I don't know why Lammers is in this team. Cantwell, I think, is a little bit... Uh, inconsistent, probably the kindest word, 
But give him a chance in his best position. And obviously, he was hauled off early. I think McCausland should be in this team. I, I look at the Rangers players, Jonathan, the, the, the ones that they've signed, Lammers, Sifuentes, Dessers. And I think, is there not range, young Rangers players? And I'm constantly told that Rangers have good young players coming through, McCausland being one, Bailey Rice being another, although he's only a kid. Are there not players there who could go into the team or into the squad, come off the bench, that would be a better option than spending millions of pounds on these guys who, who don't seem to be up to it at all? McCausland is proof of that. I think he's having, a, he's having a really, really good start to his Rangers career. He looks a very confident kid. I don't know, Clement's still figuring it all out. But, you know, I just... I just thought that was a very, very poor performance, a weak performance, not helped by Cantwell being out of position and Lammers being in the team, when I don't think he should be anywhere near it. It's a really interesting one uh, going forward to the weekend. Rangers will be at home to St. Mirren. And let's speak about Todd Cantwell. It must have been a hugely painful moment for him to be subbed off in the first half, obviously. And you've mentioned about positionally... What do you think this means for Todd Cantwell going forward? I don't know. I would love to sit down with Clemmer and, uh, and, and pick his brains on what he thinks of all of these players. I know it was a kind of a tactical thing, but obviously he wasn't happy with the way Cantwell was playing. He wasn't happy that he wasn't following instructions. That didn't sound great for Cantwell. And I think Cantwell, you know, he has a, a bit of an attitude, you know, tick-tock, Todd, and all the rest of it. I'm not sure that's working well with, with Philip Clement, who looks like a no-nonsense manager. I don't think, I don't think uh, Clement spends his evenings looking at TikTok. So um, I think Cantwell has a, lot of, has a lot of convincing to do, but I think a lot of them have. Uh, I think he's, his place is, is in jeopardy. But I would say, move him into his best position. You know, give, give the guy the best chance he can have. And that, for that, Lammer, Lammers needs to go out. I'd start McCausland. And I would start, I would look at, at some other younger players that Rangers have and bring them in. Sefentes doesn't look up to it to me. You know, so I think it would be very interesting to see what happens at Rangers in January, if they could do any business. And as Clement makes value judgments on players, who survives and who doesn't. Uh, as for Aberdeen in Helsinki, a challenging night for players and our intrepid sports sound team <laughs> in the Finnish capital, I think it's fair to say. Let's get a flavour of an unusual evening. They're used to snow and they know how to handle it. That's certainly the case here, how quickly they're, they're, they're yeah. uh, clearing the pitch, isn't it? It's very impressive. You can see that in the streets around the place and yeah. things like that as well. And I'm just glad that these Christmas songs aren't 500 decibels louder. <laughs> They're too loud, sorry. It's a pleasant change. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a nice little interlude and uh, now the Aberdeen fans are looking at hitting the tractors with some snowballs and so I mean that's not going to help with the clearing of the pitch I have to say but Craig Sampson uh, the goalkeeping coach for Aberdeen is out and Kel Roos is on the touchline down in front of us getting balls pelted at him and the players from Aberdeen are back out they're running onto the pitch it's just like a winter wonderland what a lovely <laughs> atmosphere I noticed some of our sports end reporters, bottles of water freezing at the match and obviously snowball fights uh, broke out as well. But um, yeah, in the end, I guess a spirited comeback from Aberdeen. And well, they might be out, but have Aberdeen got a feel-good factor? Do you feel overall from this European adventure, Tom English? I, th I, think, it's been a, I think it's been a good campaign for them, Jonathan. You know, they have three draws. Uh, two defeats, all by both by a goal. It might have been a whole lot better. They should have beaten HJK at Patadri. They should have beaten Pauk at Patadri. So if they if they win both of those games and they should have won, they'd be they'd be sitting on I think on eight points and they'd be banging contention for first or second place in the group. So you know it's you could say yeah positive. You know they have they have acquitted themselves well, but it could have been better. You know, they could still be in Europe. I think for a team that's just getting back into group stage football and that kind of really testing regime of, of European football, domestic football, European football, domestic football, for, the, for them to just be parachuted into that, I think they've done well in Europe. It's, it's to the detriment of their domestic stuff, unquestionably, because I think, I think they are in a false position yeah. where they are. But once, once Europe is out of the way, once the turn of the year comes, I think... Aberdeen should 
accelerate up the table. They should. They need to because their domestic form has been has been really poor. Albeit they're in a they're in a cup final. You're listening to the Scottish Football Podcast. Now let's turn our attention to the weekend. Saturday's Premiership fixtures are Kilmarnock versus Hearts, Livingston versus Ross County, and Motherwell versus Dundee. While on Sunday, Celtic travel to St Johnston, Aberdeen are at Hibs, and Rangers host St Mirren. Got all that, Tom? What are the standout <laughs> games for you? Um, yeah. Um, look, I think they're all standout, Jonathan. I'm going to be diplomatic here. I'm not going to pick one. I'm not going to pick one over the other. Um, it's. Uh, I, I think. That, I think they all have. They all have a certain appeal. Put it that way. How about you? Aberdeen travelling to Hibs, I think, is quite an interesting one. If we're talking about Aberdeen putting their European exertions aside, and obviously the challenge for them now will be to finish third, but then that's also the challenge for Hibs and for Hearts and St. Brennan as well, yeah, obviously. Absolutely. Um, Hibs, they've won two in a row for the first time in a long time uh, in the league. So it looks like they might be getting a little bit of traction there, but this is, this is a big examination for them. That is a big game, you know, two of the Scottish giants in inverted commas. I think that's a good one. I'll be glued to that in the studio beside big Kenny Mack. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be mopping his brow as, as normal on a Saturday afternoon, Jonathan, whenever a goal gets in, the big, the big man gets very excited. I'm hoping for a bit of controversy. Oh, I've never, I, I mean, you know, I've never seen... Never seen a man love football controversy uh, more than the big man. <laughs> Feel- <laughs> it keeps that hour and a half from half five to seven o'clock going oh, as well as the entire honestly, afternoon. Honestly, so you see him, he's in understand. the studio praying, <laughs> praying for VAR controversies or something, something that elevates it above the football and, and that creates a row. And then I think when... I'm in a studio and Mikey Stewart walks in. He's going, oh, yes, here. These two, these two, oh. will be, they'll be skin and hair flying now. He loves it. Can't get enough of it. Happiest, <laughs> happiest man in Scotland on a Saturday afternoon is Big Kenny. Absolutely. Big weekend at the bottom of the table as well for everyone to enjoy. Home games for uh, Livingston and Motherwell. Livingston at home to Ross County. Motherwell at home to Dundee. And both desperately in need of a win. Mm. It'll get quite... <sighs> Desperate and nasty, you kind of feel at the end of the season at the bottom of the table as well, Tom, don't you? Uh, I do. And you look at, I mean, we talk about oh, the league is very competitive and there's only a certain amount of points separating third from 12th and all the rest of it. There's, there's a reason for that. It's because the league isn't very good this year uh, outside of the top two. And you could maybe even include the top two in that, in that they are not. Celtic, I think are not particularly great this season. Rangers are flawed again. Fully expect Celtic to win the league, but still, I mean, they're not great. You think they'll step back this season, you feel, Celtic? I do, yeah, I do, yeah, I do. You know, they've drawn three games. There's a couple of other games in the league, but they've won by a goal pretty late on. They're not blowing teams away with, with a regularity that you might expect. They have injuries, unquestionably injuries, but I don't think, I don't think Celtic, I've hit their stride yet. Uh, Rangers still kind of up and down under Clement, still feeling his way into it. Like St. Mirren, you know, they've, I've, they've won two in eight, I think, in the league, and they're still sitting third. You know, nobody's accelerated past them, although teams underneath them have a game in hand. So, so that, might, that might change if St. Mirren don't, don't pick up. And at the bottom, you know, Livy, you can't say they look doomed because there's a tiny points gap there, right? And, it, and we're only in December. But they they look they look like they're struggling. I think Ross County will get a lift with Derek Adams. They already have. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's in, it's interesting. But let's be honest. And I know we're all trying to big it up, and people will be accusing me. Oh, you're talking Scottish football, down. I'm not. I'm just being realistic. I don't think this league this season is all that good. I think we've seen better versions of this. Maybe it'll improve second half of the season. But there's a lot of teams: Aberdeen, Hearts, Hibs. All these the bigger the bigger teams haven't haven't done it yet. Hence why Big Kenny ramps up the controversy. Yeah, see, maybe maybe maybe, maybe Kenny's kind of controversial gene is rubbing off on me there because you know I mean Kenny Kenny would love this chat, Jonathan. Oh. I'm half expecting him to appear on his pod, saying, "Ah, oh, okay, Jonathan, move aside. This like <laughs> this sounds like a show for me." <laughs> 
That's all for us today. Many thanks to Tom English and Jonathan Pierce, and thank you for listening. As ever, stick with us for all your Scottish football this weekend. Sports Sound on BBC Radio Scotland will have all the action live, and Sports Scene on the BBC Scotland channel will have all the highlights half past seven on Saturday and a quarter past seven on Sunday. We always want to hear from you, dear listeners, so if you have any comments or questions about anything relating to the game in this country, get them in to scottishfootball at bbc.co.uk. And remember, you can get us wherever you get your podcasts, so if you haven't done so already, just search for the Scottish Football Podcast and hit subscribe. Scottish Football, the gift that keeps on giving. Thanks for listening. Just a quick reminder, the Behind the Goals podcast is available every Tuesday with me, Rachel Corsi, and me, Leanne Crichton. It's your one-stop shop for our take on everything that's happening in the world of football. Just head to BBC Sounds or wherever you get your podcasts and search for Behind the Goals.